Here's Google Apps Updates Roundup number 92. In this episode, I'm going to show you more than 20 new features in 14 different apps. So make sure all your Google Apps are up to date and let me show you what's new. Let's start the episode with the YouTube app. Google released some new features to YouTube Premium subscribers and the first one I would like to show you is called Jump Ahead. Let's say you are playing a YouTube video and then you double tap on the viewfinder to seek forward, you will see this new jump ahead button. Tapping on it will take you to the next most played part in this video. Keep in mind that this feature doesn't work with all videos. So for example, when I double tap on this one, I can see the jump ahead button. But when I play any other video and do the same thing, the button doesn't show up. And Google did mention this in their post about this feature. The second premium feature they added is the ability to watch YouTube shorts in picture in picture view, as you see here. And you can jump to the next short using the controls like this. You can pause and also get back to the full screen view. The third change is more related to the content creators. Now we have the option to upload up to three different thumbnails for the same video to test and compare their click-through rate. So you might see different thumbnails for the same video if the content creator decided to use this feature. And the next app we have is YouTube Music. The first change, when you tap on the search bar, now you will see this new sound wave button next to the microphone. Tapping on it will start the hum to search feature, which is the same thing we saw earlier with the YouTube app, but now you can do the same thing from YouTube music, which makes more sense. Moving to the podcasts, now we will see some new important changes. The first one is the more sort options. Here you can sort with the latest, oldest, popular, or creator provided. You can only view the in progress, the unplayed, the downloaded, and the played. On top of this, you have the ability to mark any episode as played. So for example, when you tap on the ellipses next to it, you have here the ability to mark as played, which is a very convenient feature for podcasts. Now let's move on to Google Photos and it got two minor new changes. The first one is the replacement of the utilities button with the locked folder and anything under utilities is now scattered across different places. So for example, under the plus button, now you will see share with partner, import from other devices, which used to be under utilities before. So now you have easier access to your locked folder. The second change, when you create a highlight video and then tap on the soundtrack button, now you have the option to remove it from the video which was missing from the previous versions. Now let's talk about six different apps that got one feature each. Starting with Google Messages, under settings now you have the option to turn off the expressive animations, which are the animations you get when you react to certain messages like this, or the full screen animations you get when you send certain phrases. The second app in this list is Google Contacts and now the individual contact widget is much more useful. So let me add it to my home screen and assign it to one of my numbers and make it bigger. The first change you will notice is the ability to see the text messages you received with the ability to reply using the smart replies feature with only one tap. And if you are sharing your live location with this contact through Google Maps, you will see this small Google Maps icon at the bottom right corner. Tapping on that profile picture will take you to the contact page, which will show you the live location card. On top of this, you have the ability to jump right away to the conversation from here and also make a quick call to this number. The next app we have is Gboard and you will see some minor tweaks when it comes to the floating keyboard. Every time you move it or resize it, you will see this new reset button at the bottom right corner. Plus the dismiss button is now showing inside the keyboard frame and instead of showing at the bottom left corner like before. The next app we have is Google Chrome and the read aloud feature got a complete revamp. The first change is in the name. Now it's called listen to this page instead of read aloud. And when you tap on it, you will get a completely different interface. It will first show you a bar at the bottom with an X to dismiss and a play and pause button. Tapping on it will show you a bigger card with the article name, the progress bar, the seek forward and backward, and also the ability to change the playback speed. And when you tap on the ellipses, you will see things like changing the voice and here you have plenty of options to choose from. In addition to turning on or off the highlight text and auto scroll feature. The only problem I have with this feature is it doesn't support the background playback. Every time I quit Google Chrome, 
it stops and I have to open the app and hit the play button again. So I'm not sure why Google doesn't support this feature because there is no point to look at the screen while the feature is reading the article. It's better to do something else while listening to it which is more useful. The fifth app we have is the recorder and now we got a brand new shortcut to start the recording immediately. And the last one in this list is Gemini. Now you can ask general questions on the lock screen. So let me show you an example. What's the weather? It's 41 and mostly sunny. Today, it'll be partly cloudy with a high of 42 and a low of 33. It's 41 and mostly... To activate this feature, you need to jump to the Gemini app settings and then Gemini on lock screen and make sure the toggle is turned on. Now let's talk about the cross device services as it got two new amazing features. Now you have the ability to transfer video calls between your devices if they are signed into the same Google account in addition to instantly share your hotspot connection. To access this feature, you need to jump to your settings, scroll down, then go to Google then devices and sharing, and then cross device services. If you have the feature available, you will be greeted with this new splash screen saying other devices signed into your Google account can find this device and share things like video calls. When you tap on next, it will ask you to choose a group. So for example, if you have multiple Google accounts, it will ask you if you want to use this Google account for sharing or you can skip it by tapping on this button. So if you want to use this one, you then tap on OK, then skip the other one and so on until you finish the setup. And once you do this, you will see two toggles, one for call casting and one for the internet sharing. If you want to know more about any of these features, you can simply tap on it and it will show you more information. You can turn them on or off individually if you want. Then you have a section for the device groups with this phone. From here, you can check the groups your device is included in. You can remove it from the group by turning off the switch and also check the other devices included in the same group. And if you want to add your phone to another group, and you have multiple Google accounts, you can simply tap on the email address and turn on the switch like this. And you also have the ability to change your device name from here. So let me show you a real life example for both features, starting with the instant hotspot. Here I have my Pixel 8 Pro with the hotspot turned on and my Pixel 7 Pro is connected already to my home network. So I'm gonna turn off the Wi-Fi and turn it on again. And in this case, it will give the priority to the Pixel 8 Pro and connect to it immediately without typing any passwords. Moving to the video call transfer, here I have Google Meet on both devices signed into the same Google account. So I will start a quick meeting on one of the devices to show you how the feature works. Once you finish joining the meeting, you will see the cast button at the top right corner. Tapping on it will show you the list of available devices under this group. So I'm going to choose the Pixel 7 Pro. And once I do this, it will immediately transfer the call to the other phone. And then you need to tap on switch here. Once you do this, it will stop the call from the original device and move it to the new one. Now let's move on to the Gmail app and it got two new features. The first one is the ability to summarize your email messages. If you have the feature available, you will see a button at the top under the email subject. Tapping on it will immediately give you a quick summary using Gemini. But keep in mind that this feature only works if you have multiple messages in the same thread. The second change is the new updates mailbox. Once you get the feature on your phone, you will see this banner within your messages list saying now Gmail puts messages that may not need your immediate attention in updates. You can change this anytime in settings. So I have the feature already activated and to check your updates mailbox, you need to go to the side menu and you will see updates over here and it will include anything not that important so you can check later if you want to turn off this feature you can scroll down and go to settings and then choose the mailbox and then you have inbox categories and you can remove or add whatever you want next the google app and it got three new features the first one when you scroll all the way down in the discover feed you will see a new button called following next to more stories this one will only show you articles from the websites you follow. 
And when you tap on any of the articles, now the animation looks different. It starts from the right side towards the left like this, and instead of popping on the screen like before. And lastly, the Your Space banner at the top now has more cards to add, like the nearby events and the TV and movies. But keep in mind that I only got these new options when I connected myself to a VPN in India. Now let's talk about the Google Home app and it got two new features on Wear OS. Google started to roll out the new Google Home tile for Wear OS, which is part of June 24 feature drop. To add that tile to your watch, you need to tap on the plus button and you will see a new tile called Favorites. When you add it for the first time, you need to tap on select to select your current home and it will immediately show you the top five devices in your favorites list. You can also quickly access the app from here by tapping on open and when you tap on any of these buttons, it will take you to the relevant tile so you can turn the device on or off, adjust the intensity and so on. The second change is the ability to add a specific device shortcut to your watch face complication. So for example, I have here one complication only. So when I edit my watch face and then tap on it to select, when you scroll down a bit, you will see something here called device shortcut with the Google Home app name, which is over here. And now it will show you all the devices you have when you select any of them, it will add it to your watch face with the icon relevant to the device. Tapping on it will do the same thing. It will take you immediately to the tile so you can take the action. And I'm gonna end this video by talking about Google Wallet, which got two new features. The first one under the wallet settings, now you have the option to manage the wallet notifications. When you tap on it, it will allow you to choose what type of notifications you want to receive from Google Wallet when you make payments. The second change is the new fun promotion to celebrate Paris 2024 Olympics. If you have a Visa card in your Google Wallet, which is the exclusive payment technology partner for the event, once you start making payments, you will start earning mascots. Mascots are characters related to the Olympics. So this one I earned already. Here's the second one. And it says here, when I make two more payments, I will get the third. So you can keep earning these characters. And that's pretty much it. So these are all the new changes I wanted to show you. And if you spotted any new feature in Google Apps, please reach me out on social media to include in my future episodes. But for now, thanks so much for watching and see you in the next video.